after giving first fruit, she said she set some things aside again for kingdom. So if you are giving anything here today, it's not a waste, it's not a loss. And you are not M-U-M-U. Don't let them call you Momo for what you are doing. Your Momo never do. You, know, you are not a Momo at all. The people of the world will actually term you so. And they tell you you don't know what you are doing. Those your pastor wearing fine suits, you are going to give them money again. Praise the Lord. And we have announced it severally. None of our leaders, including me in this ministry, earn a single dime of salary from TACF since it started. We are not on salary. The same way you have gone with your first fruit, we go with our first fruit. For us, it's a, it's a yearly, yearly tradition. We have a meeting this coming weekend now. At the end of that meeting, all the pastors of this ministry will be blessed for giving their first fruit. And that's why God has been blessing. We, know, we knew where we started from. In 2008, when this principle was introduced to us as a ministry, there was a lot of argument. Because many were hearing it for the first time in 2008. A lot of questions about definition. Praise the Lord. And a lot of argument. In fact, I can still remember vividly that meeting. And um, those of us who foolishly obeyed the word of God. Did you hear the word foolishly? We decided to eat Proverbs 3. We ate it raw. We obeyed it raw. As at that time, among the leaders in this ministry, that is about 10, 11 years ago, 2008. How many years ago? 10 years ago. You know, as at that time in this ministry, none of our pastors has a property that you can say, this is your own property. I'm not sure any have traveled abroad. Huh? As at that time. Huh? We cast our first fruit in January of 2018. By March of 2018 was my own first visit abroad. By March. You know, but I don't know. Nihi left the same year for his own masters in September of the same year. First fruit will open international doors. And we have been flying since. Sometimes we even fly during the week. You will think that we are all in the Nigeria together. We'll just finish service like this. We'll go. We'll come back before next Sunday. Just because one secret came and we foolishly obeyed. Somebody will say, but that time, I remember my salary in 2008. Can you compare it with my salary now? What we gave as prosper that we look like we want to die. <laughs> when we were giving it. I remember in 2010, two years after, God started multiplying us. 2010, my wife and I, we started putting money aside. We had some savings that at that time we said, okay, it's now time to go and buy a land and build. And here comes God again. He says, oh, for PACM, we need to buy a property for this ministry. That was the first time, 2010, I announced in this place that we need a property for PACM. So everybody, can you bring your sacrifice again? You know, after giving first fruit, you now tell people to now give sacrificially again. And for the first time in my life, just to tell you what our salary was before 2008, for the first time in, our, in, our, in my life, I discussed with my wife, I said, can we give God a millionaire towards buying a property? First time in 2010. So to, together we put one million aside to buy a property for this ministry, just like every other person gave. And I remember, I can still remember what I did. It was a GTB check, and I went to look for a gold pen to write it. You know, I know CPM will not accept that now. You know, but in 2010, anything can still go. So we, I looked for a gold pen just to say, I'm dropping my first one million check for the first, for the kingdom. You know, and to cut the long story short, the same year, the property we could not buy with our savings, before the end of the year, we move into our own property. The same year, 2010. Just to tell you what first fruit can deliver and what sacrificial giving can deliver. Many of our pastors, you had them during the vigil, share their testimony. God can open door if you can only believe. This afternoon, I would like to start from the same scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with, the, with your substance. 
somebody is here with his e substance, with our substance, and with the first fruit of your increase. That's what God is saying. And he says, when you do, verse 9, 10 will now come to pass. Your bank or your bank account, this year I expect amen from somebody will be plenty. Yeah. And your presses shall burst forth with new wine. Yeah. Can I hear your louder amen? amen? So when, if you go back to verse 9, when we give our first fruit, we honor the Lord. You are here this afternoon with your first fruit. You are doing it in honor, in appreciation of Jesus. When you give this fruit, you show to God that I really reference you. I honor you. And the Talmud chapter 8, 18 says, God is the one that gives us power to get wealth. Brethren, whatever you have today, God gave it to you. So if you cannot honor him with your first fruit, you show to God that, God, I'm only worshiping you with my lips. My heart is not really there. I don't really trust you with my money. God wants to touch your substance this afternoon and this year. And he's asking us to honor him. How does it look? God gave you 12 things and he says, give me the first one. And you are behaving like the children in the children's church. He said, no, I cannot give you. Can, can you imagine sometimes you give your, mo your children money to buy things and they have all the snacks with them. And I said, JD, can I have one? He said, no, 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 no. It's my money. God gave you that job, and if he's asking for one over 12, why are you behaving like a kid? Some, to even pay 10% is a problem. They look for reason. They look for definition. Is it net pay? Is it gross pay? Is it, is it net pay after all deduction, including loan? 10%. That's what people look for, all manner of definition. They struggle with it. Now here comes God saying, give me 100%. He said, no, ah, I cannot die, you, ah. I, 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 I cannot come and kill myself on this one, no, ah. No, 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 no. Pastor, you don't know how I work to get this money. The insult is my hard earned income, and I should just go and drop everything. So no, no, I have to pray. Let the angel of the Lord appear to me and explain the meaning of over three verse 9. There must be a, a Greek translation of that scripture. Praise the Lord. Somebody talked like that in the year 2008. Somebody talked like that. Don't mock whatever God is saying. In the devotional, I shared with you that Pastor Deboye wrote about first fruit. He said, those who will end materially strong, they will not trivialize God's principle, God's instruction. Those who will end materially strong, they will not take what does not belong to them. Check your life from when this principle has been sh shared and you have not obeyed and check it now. Check those who obey. It may look like certain big seed is leaving your hand, but I can tell you it's not leaving your life. On th the Thursday message, I talk about how the five loaves of bread and two fishes multiplied. And they ended up with 12 baskets. That is beyond human reasoning. And that's what's going to happen this year. The first blessing I release to you, for every giver of first fruit, this year, 2018, you will see supernatural abundance. Your story will be see never dry. In the name of Jesus. So, Proverbs 3, 9 says, honor the Lord. Every time we give first fruit, we are honoring the Lord. Knowing fully well that before we got that increase, we were at zero points. He gave us. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, God is the one that gave us the power to get wealth. He gave it to us. Those who want to surprise God, they even say, God, we are not going to give you 100%. We are going to add more. I, I, we want to just prove to you that we, we, we trust you. Our confidence is not in material things. It's not in money. Our confidence is in you. You are our God. You are our strength. Can I hear amen from somebody? So this principle is showing complete obedience to God. Complete, total, absolute obedience to God. And uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Before this principle was shared, a lot of people don't know what the benefit of first fruit can deliver. 
And as we continue to wallow in poverty, Isaiah 1.19, the Living Bible Translation, TLB, Isaiah 1.19, I'm not sure IT, you have TLB, but if you have anything close to it, King James Version says, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I know you have NLT, but this is not what I want. TLB says, if you can only let me help you, I will make you rich. God said, if you can only let me help you. NLT says, if you will only obey me, you will have plenty to eat. But TLB brought it home. He said, if you only let me help you, I will make you rich. How? Give him what he's asking for. Obey his instruction. There's a scripture I read in the course of this week, and I think I want to show to you. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 8. Proverbs 13, verse 8. KJV. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 8. Thank you. The ransom of a man's life are his riches. Those of you who know about this issue of kidnapping, you know the meaning of ransom. Money in exchange for life. <clears throat> and God said the ransom of a man's life are his money, his salary, his earnings. But the poor will never listen to rebuke. They will never hear rebuke. No matter how you explain about instruction, a poor man will say, leave me with my poverty. But those who want exchange of their current level, the ransom for a man's life are his riches. Somebody, as this first fruit drop today, sickness leave your body. Yeah. Infirmity goes forever from you. Yeah. So if you go back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, verse 9 talk about the instruction. As we obey the instruction, verse 10 kicks in. It says you will see plenty. And you will see new wine. So supernatural abundance follow those who give first fruit. I am a testifier. I knew where I was before this principle came. It was like light from heaven. It was a burden. It was hard to obey at the beginning. But right now, why not? We even planned for it. Strategically, we gave you the book on first fruit in the month of November. Can you remember? Just for you to plan ahead and not to use all the December salary for chicken. Plan ahead for your life. Because we, we are conscious now that God, if the entire year is going to be in order, we want to give you the first in the year. If we are going to enjoy the rest, we want the first to be for you. That's what we did. And that's what we have been doing. I challenge somebody who has not made up his mind today to change your mind. This principle will change your life. And it's something you have to do willingly, cheerfully, if you want blessing. Don't do it as under pressure, under duress. In fact, God doesn't even know the address of those who don't give. He doesn't even know whether you came to church or not. But everyone who is a partaker of this blessing, it takes their name. And the blessing is too sure. It's too sh I, I have no doubt that this blessing is coming. He says, so shall your van be filled with plenty and your, and your press shall burst forth with new wine, supernatural abundance, strange favor. Somebody this year, you will see strange favor. Yeah. Strange favor. And I'm praying for people amongst us, at, at least for anyone here who is ACA, you are not less than any minister in this country. The same way Oshiba Joe was doing his legal practice and enjoying his pastor work, and somebody will just call him to become the vice president of Nigeria. This year, 2018, they will call you for honor. Yeah. They came to Nigeria to look for Nkechi to honor her. Harvard said, we are studying you. We want to put you in our curriculum. And I, I imagine what that curriculum will be. What it will be like is that Anybody can be an entrepreneur, no matter your location. And they start studying her. She, she, not, she is now a case study in Advert. You know the case study you are doing in ICANN. Where you get to a, a, a point where multinational, international organization, they now understudy your person. You, your fame goes beyond border. Can I hear amen from someone? I do not want your global relevance to remain a confession. This is what to activate it now. This is what to activate it now. Instruction will be coming for prophecy to come to pass. Stop confessing global relevance if you cannot obey simple instruction. 
<laughs> That's what God is saying. And he said, if you only let me help you, I'll make you rich. Supernaturally rich. You know, Dr. Lukoya in his own message, he said some people can pray prayer that will break the head of witches. But when it comes to honor the Lord with your first fruit, you just take exemption. But when it comes to die, 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 the high witch, die. But when it comes to giving, the man says, no, I'm a cagum. There's glue in my hand. Nothing, nothing can take this one away from me. Praise the Lord. You want your level to change, you must be a giver. The financial blessing answer to financial seed. If you are not a sower, during harvest, you, you must take exemption. You must be on vacation. But those who sow will reap. And he put it there. He said, those who sow so sparingly will reap how? But those who sow bountifully, their harvest will be the same. This afternoon, your seed will determine your harvest. Your seed will determine your future. And God has called for it. He's calling his church to, to get ready for a new level of harvest. I'm not here to deceive you. This ministry is not broke. In fact, that testimony I shared with you in 20, 2000, when we raised that offering, the total offering we raised, all of us in this ministry, I'm not sure it's up to 3 million, 2, two point something we, we raised. And that 2.7, some people are saying, oh, you know, since 2010. They have not redeemed it. But are we not in better? God will not, if you know the amount we have spent to make that place the way it is right now, it will, you wonder, where is this money coming from? To equip that place alone, I was thinking it was $15,000 for equipment until they showed me and it was how many dollars to the key? Eh? 40? Eh? I can't hear you. $40,000 to buy microphone. Uh, uh, no, keyboard is not there, speakers. And other things to put in that place because we said we don't want to move. You know, when you're going to a new house, everything should be. Um, you know, we're doing. We're, we, we were doing. We we're doing. We we're doing. We we're doing big man. I said we don't want to move anything. But when I saw the budget, I said let's be let let's now use our accountant. Can come come to my office. You know, I sat with the and the engineer last Sunday. And we began to say what can we move from this place <laughs> to to that place. You know, and uh, we began to change our mind. But God is going to fill that house. He's going to use me. And he's going to use you. So what am I saying? I want you, I tell you, God has really helped us as a ministry. I remember my wife and I converse. When the first time we raised that seed, and it was, I think it's 2.3 million in 2010. And we discussed when we got home, he said, I said, we have raised the seed to buy a property on this seed. And my wife would say, how much is all the vow? I said 2.3. He just laughed at me. He said, is that the amount they buy? <laughs> Property on this street. But I'm a man of faith. I'm not moved by 2.3 that is not redeemed. I'm moved by the heart. And I'm moved by those who jump into the river. Because God will multiply your seed. He will multiply your harvest. He will multiply your portion. And before you know it, year by year, it looks like it will not come to pass. Year by year, until we are here. And we, we have not stopped. Very soon, here. Yeah. 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 You see more possession coming to pass. At least three, three property on this place. Three. Three. If the landlord of those property are in church, um, we just need it. We just need it. Praise God. And we'll give you a better place. We'll give you the Malachi. You can be, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. If you go to MFM, every, every house around them in Onikedia, they continue to acquire. acquire. I was in MFM 1995, and when I go there today, it's a complete transformation. It, it, is, it is ready, roundabout. They are buying everywhere around them. And why can't we do the same thing? Because the moment you shout, far, 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 and the landlord is hearing, further and die, further and die, further and die, he will relocate. <laughs> will, every night, further and die, further and die. He will come to the pastor and say, I want to sell my property to a place where I will be hearing uh, peace and not uh, all this for that and that every day. Praise the Lord. Now, in this Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, the word fruit there means produce. I know the Lord with your first fruit. It means produce. Produce involves work and effort. Your produce involves your labor. Your produce 
is your productivity, your deliverable. And it can be in the form, for accountant's sake, it can be in form of reward or earnings. If it's your reward, then it can be payment for work done, which is like your salary, your wages, your commission, your fees, and your remuneration. If it's earnings, it can be in form of your dividend, capital gains, interest, and your royalty. This afternoon, I'd like to tell you the story of Cain and Abel. You know the story so well. Genesis chapter 4 from 3 to 7. Genesis 4, 3 to 7 tells us about how these two people went to offer to God their offering. In fact, we, from this scripture, God never demanded for it. It was a, 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 a willing offering they wanted to give to God. And we read something about uh, Cain. Cain took of his own harvest. Genesis chapter 4 from 3 to 7. Chapter, verse 3 talk about Cain took out of his own produce to give to God. And Abel took the best, the fatty, and the firstling among his own animals to give to God. Something great happened. The Bible says, and God had respect to the offering of Abel. And the offering of Cain, he had no respect. First fruits can be rejected. The offering of Cain was rejected. And the countenance fell. He was saying, God, why will you reject my offering? Because for Abel offering, and I, I as somebody who have uh, animals around me, I have dogs around me, I understand what Abel did. The Bible says, Abel, can you give me an amplified version of this verse 4? Abel brought the first name of his flock and of the fat, the fattest thereof. This is amplified for Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat portion and the Lord had respect and regard for Abel. I understand this very well. Give me verse 3. Let's see what Cain did. Now you'll see the difference why one was rejected. Cain, the Bible says in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. He just went there, give it to God. But in Abel's case, verse 4, the Bible says Abel went to look for the first, the first name. He went to look for the fat, the biggest among the animals. And why I say I understand is that if you have any animal, my, my, my first dog, the first puppy that came out of that dog up to today is the biggest. That's my first fruit. He, I mean, it was like times three of every other that came out of it. That's what Abel did. Abel looked for that first, and if the first is not fat enough, the Bible says he, he got the first line of the flock and of the fat thereof. He went to look for the biggest. Now, what is this principle all about? Somebody seated here this afternoon, this is the biggest seed you are sowing in your life. It's your best. And that's the principle of first fruit. It's the best and the first. Maybe you have never sown any seed that is this high before. You are obeying the word of God. It's the principle of the fat and the first. The first and the best. Abel offering was in quantity and in quality. Ken offering was just quantity. You want to give God 100 naira, you now want to look for plenty 10, 10 naira to make it 10. So that the envelope, when they shake it up like this, can be heavy. By the time the ushers open the envelope and they start carrying 10, 10 naira, I say, Lord have mercy. Who is this person? You know. But somebody else can put a single check here and it's 100 million. Who is that person? And it's 100 million. Just to say, God, I, I have come to worship you. I have come to praise you. So today, I want people in the category of Abel to come before God. Lord, this is my best seed. This is my fattest calf. This is my first offering to honor you to praise you. I've just come to show my love to you. There are two things I can say from this story. Now, if you read further, you will discover that Cain queried God. Why did you reject my offering? And 
God replied him, he said, the Bible says, and God had no respect for Cain and his offering. So one thing there is identity. Your offering is you. If God look at your every love today, can this really represent Joseph? Now, when you drop the offering in the offering basket, when they are taking it away, do you really feel something virtue has left, out, left you? Can you really feel that something has left you? Because when this offering is the offering basket now, this is you entering the offering basket, and they are taking you away. You should be able to feel something. Ah, my seed is going. This is the entire general salary. That is what you say. Identity. Your offering is your person. God had no regard for Hebel. He had respect to, I mean, for Cain. He had respect to Hebel. Your offering is you. So your offering in this service represents your person. As the pastors take it from you today and bless you, just know that you have, been, you have identified with God. You have identified with his principle. And there is very, I need for every one of us to have that understanding. Number two thing from this story is relationship. Abel was not approaching God just like a casual friend. Abel went to look, what will I give to this my God in honor? And he went for the first, he went for the best, he went for the fattest of the animal to give to God. He was not just one. He went to look for all the firstborn. It was plenty to behold. And when God looked from heaven, I mean, you need to read um, it from another transition. Um, I, I think that translation says, when God saw the offering of Abel, he had respect for him and his offering. The number two thing I'm talking about is relationship. You cannot tell me you love God and to give him one more salary is a body. If you love him, you must show it. And I have a story of people who are in relationship. Somebody you are in relationship with, uh, he has promised to marry you, but something about this relationship is that on your birthday, there's no gift. Christmas, no gift. Easter, no gift. You qualify, no gift. There's nothing. But when the guy is having his own birthday, you give gifts. You ask the guy, what is happening? He said, don't worry. When you marry me, you will enjoy. After some, after, you know, you see the sister shouting error now. After some time, the sister will just say, um, brother, Braki, Braki, I, 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 think, I think we need to talk. Uh, you know. <laughs> Braki, we need to talk. He said, ah, what is that? But he said, you know, you proposed. It's like, I don't have peace within me. <laughs> so somebody is even saying he will say outright no that I'm switched off. He say I'm, I I think the more I pray about this relationship, it's like I don't have a go ahead from God because this guy is not a giver. He said, "Don't worry, after marriage you will enjoy. Run for your life now, <laughs> praise the Lord." So um, I mean, during that period of courtship, if you really love. And when, after talking and talking, he said, you know I love you. I love you. Back day, nothing. Christmas, nothing. Easter, nothing. I qualify, nothing. From you, nothing, nothing. He said, don't worry. After marriage, you will enjoy. It's not true. That brother is Akagom. Akagom. And that is the same thing here that we are learning from this story. God is saying to someone, if you truly love me, show it in your giving. Don't, don't just sing, I love you, Lord. You know, very wonderful voice. And I give my life to worship. But when it comes to offering, nothing. Oh, my soul. Let your bank account rejoice. Let it show God you love him this afternoon. Uh, first fruit is an act of faith. If you are not doing it by faith this afternoon, there is no reward. I've shared testimony with you. It's time for somebody to change level. It's time for somebody to move forward. I want your faith to be on fire. This first fruit is going to change your life. It's going to bring you honor. It's going to take you to great places. Now, why do we bring it to the house of God? I've told you before. Any church where first fruit is not taught, you don't give it there. Because there is no blessing there. The difference between first fruit and tithe is that when you give it, the priest must proclaim a blessing on you. I do not take this meeting casually at all. 
waited upon the Lord, prayed about this meeting. Lord, let everyone who is coming to honor you, let your blessing be their portion, change their level, make them international. Can I hear amen from somebody? Amen. You know, make them international. Let their visas be approved. Amen. Let their relocation be granted. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want you to get said, this is a blessing service. As the priest, take the seed from your heart, hand today. Let your heavens be open. Let something that you have been believing God, let it drop for you. Let it come your way. So you bring your first fruit to the house of God for the priest to command the blessing to rest upon you. And January is ideal. January for the world, they say, is the most difficult month. But we prepared for it. We have had this message ahead. Maybe somebody is here this afternoon and say, Pastor, I'm hearing it for the first time. Can you give me time? It's between you and God. Just make sure you honor God. Give your seed. In this place, nobody is taking your register. Until lately, even in our pastorates, we don't even take, we don't, we don't even take note of who is giving or who, who is not giving. Because everybody, nobody should be pressured. Everybody should be comfortable. We got into bed there without anybody being levied. Without anybody being on pressure. The reason we don't use the big generator for some services during midweek is that sometimes when we look at the, the offering on Tuesday, 1,300. 1,200, and you want to run a 60 kVA generator, but we say, why not give it? Run it. Even if the NPV of the service does not equal to the investment, run it. And we just trust God. Our last camp in November, I don't know if Benro has the data, the budget of that camp cannot be less than 5 million. Cannot be less than, cannot be less than. The actual cannot be less than how much? 7 million. To run. That's what we use your first fruit, your tithe, your offering for. And we have all the schools to contribute. Let me tell you, Pi is the one that contributes the highest because we have, we have the highest number. We eat the highest number of food. We have the highest number of workers. You know, that's what we use your first fruit and your offering for. Nobody is trying to corner what you have. This principle will change your life. It has changed my life. I have my check for first fruit written already as a priest to give it. And that's why I say to you, any pastor who is not a giver, don't sow into their life. You will be stranded because the man is stranded. And I'm not joking about it. Because there are people who believe they are the Levi. They are still in the old order. That every seed come to them and they eat it and they have not progressed by eating it. But when you see a giving, a pastor's prosperity is by his own giving. I've seen some of my friends who are pastors who don't pay tithes as pastors. And they're always in need. And I've told you before, every time you see a man of God who is stranded, who is always begging, ask him, sir, with due respect, do you pay tithe? Don't, don't go to first fruit, so start with tithe. But here, everybody in the leadership, that message has been sold to them. And we honor God with our tithe. We honor God with our first fruit. That's why we live under open heaven. That's why we don't have to bother about the church money. That's why I don't have to call you, raise me, or to help me. Even you need help. I will ask you to, to help me. I need help. Then I look up to God. Who is the one to help me? Who is the one? When I give my own heaven open, and I tell you I have been rewarded handsomely by God in this place, dangerously by God, connected by grace, Help by God, not by certificate. Not by my own ability. But God just opened the heavens and poured in his blessing. And this afternoon, I am calling somebody to also move up. Move up to a new level of glory by reason of your seed today. That proverb, every time we read it, we connect it to talent. A man's gift will make room for him. Bring him before great men and not mean men. That gift is referring to in that scripture is your seed. If you eat your seed, you eat your future. This January salary that is, now as I'm preaching now, somebody's heart is doing, should I give it, should I not give it, should I give it, should I not give it? The way this pastor is talking, it's like God has really sent him to me now. Uh, how will I escape this message? Let them end this on time. Then I will go and decide at home. Project the bank account for that person now. You should transfer the money right now. Stop showing my picture. Project the bank account. You know yourself. Transfer that money right now to the ministry account. 
by force you must be blessed. Praise God. But make sure if you are, if it's not something from your heart, don't do it. If it's not by faith, there is not reward about it. I want somebody to stand up this afternoon with your seed in your hand. And those of you who are wired to the ministry bank account, you can also stand up. It's an heart of faith. God knows what you have done in the secret. Those of us who are bringing our check with your seed in our hand, if you are doing a check, make your check payable to PSEM Pie Chapter. If you are putting it into the ministry account, it is there on your screen, on the screen. I'd like you to lift up your voice with that seed in your hand and begin to say to God, Father, I thank you because I'm a partaker of your blessing in this 2018 first fruit service. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for your hand so great, so mighty upon my life. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I worship you. Lift up your voice. You don't give first fruit without speaking. Lord, I know where I used to be before providing me with this seed. I thank you for the honor and the glory that you have brought my way. I thank you for the blessing that you have brought my way. Somebody speak out to him. Bless his holy name. Speak out to him. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give. You give seed to the sower and you give bread to the eater. Jesus, as I give this seed this afternoon, thank you for your blessing coming upon my life. I give you all praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All, heads clo all eyes closed and all head bow. Anywhere you are in this service, pastor, before you bless us, I need to reconcile certain issue to God. I need to be born again. I need to retrace my step. Anywhere you are, please lift up your right hand above your head. I'd like to pray for you. Anywhere you are in this hall, in the overflow, lift your hand above your head. It's time for salvation. It's time for you to come into the kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If, if you are lifting up your hand, say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I say no more to the devil. I declare this afternoon, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Lord, for
Begin to earn your salary in foreign currencies. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is saying amen, you will not see shame. Make sure your amen is louder than everybody. You will not borrow. All through this year, you will not be in lack. Many of you, you are sowing in tears today. A lot of need, a lot of need. But you are saying, God, I will obey you and wait. Right now, I declare, every need will be supernaturally met. Who is that person with accommodation need? Receive your help now. Change of job, receive your help now. In the name of Jesus. Someone having challenge in your marriage, by this seed right now, I declare peace in your marriage. I declare peace in your home. Amen. Joy unspeakable. Amen. Somebody say, Pastor, I'm hearing it for the first time. I have not prepared for this at all. But as you have mentioned it, I'm going to prepare for it. I'm going to do it. I declare this blessing to come upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. This house is blessed. This congregation is blessed. Amen. Beginning from today, Sunday, you will begin to swim in abundance. Amen. We'll be hearing phone calls of new things. Unusual miracles. Now someone hear testimony above your age. Receive it now. When we see your miracle, we'll be asking, are you sure he's the owner of this asset? Are you sure this 22 years old has a business in the millions? The God who surprised me, the God of PSEM, he will surprise you this year. <laughs> Lift up your two hands and give that God praise. Worship him this afternoon. Honor him. Adore him this afternoon.